So I recently did a poll on my YouTube and LinkedIn and asked all my subscriber which next series would they want me to work on and the results were surprising. So you see these are the results from LinkedIn poll and these are the results from YouTube poll and results are one sided. So yes, everyone wants me to create content on CKA, the entire end to end playlist for certified Kubernetes administrator. That's what we'll be doing now. So that's the next series that we'll be working on. And before starting this, before starting the actual series, I just wanted to create this video to provide you some uh, overview of what we'll be covering in the next, you know, a lot of videos. I'm not sure how many videos will be there in this series because I'm still recording it and uh, I will start publishing videos around three videos per week when I'm almost done recording around 50% of the course content. Right. So it will be somewhere around June first week. Uh, that will be the time when I will be start publishing the videos of this series. And uh, before giving you the overview, let me try to explain how Kubernetes got introduced in my career. So somewhere in 2020, when I was working with the Azure, Azure DevOps, uh, Kubernetes, I started learning Kubernetes on my own. And then I thought it would be a good time if I go ahead and give certified Kubernetes administrator like CKA certification. So I started, uh, you know, uh, working on it. I started learning it and somewhere in August 2020, I was able to clear the certification after a couple of months of hands on and learning and everything. Right. So it's been four years and uh, since then I have been working with Kubernetes. I worked for multiple uh, startups like as a freelancer. I worked with them to implement infrastructure as a code on their Kubernetes cluster. I worked with them as a Kubernetes administrator, you know, setting up the infrastructure from them, uh, you know, architecting their uh, high availability cluster and, and many other projects. And uh, since the day I joined Google, uh, like two years back, I have been working with this uh, service called GKE, which is Google Kubernetes engine that is based on Kubernetes. It's a managed service based on top of Kubernetes and Anthos. Um, Anthos is a multi-cloud Kubernetes service. So let's say your cluster is running on any other cloud other than GCP. So AWS, Azure, or even on-premises such as bare metal VMware, you can manage all those Kubernetes cluster right from the GCP console itself. So that's what uh, services are being offered by Anthos. To sum up, I have a total of 12 years of experience in IT and four years of which I have been working with Kubernetes. So like always, I have also created a GitHub repository to document everything, to document all the learnings, all the code snippets, notes, diagrams, and so on. And if you want, you can also create a pull request if you would like to contribute to the repository. So let's move on to that screen and let me show you the GitHub repository and then we'll talk further. All right, like always, I have created this GitHub repository. So link will be there in the description section. Don't worry about it. Currently, it has this readme file with all the topics and subtopics inside it. If we you know, expand this, but this is not written in stone. I will be continuously modifying this repository as we are moving along, as we are recording the videos. So these are the main topics that we have. OK, so the first one is cluster architecture and core concepts. So before understanding the Kubernetes core concepts or even Kubernetes architecture, we need to understand the container architecture. We need to understand the basics of Kubernetes. Why do we need Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is nothing but a container orchestration system, right? It helps us manage containers. Now we need to understand what are containers? What does a container architecture looks like and all the different components of it? So that's why we'll start with the very basic of Docker fundamentals, Docker architecture. Then we'll also be doing um, a dockerization of an application and we'll be implementing docker pull, push, tag and all different, uh, you know, commands. And then we'll start with the Kubernetes architecture. It will have all the components of control plane worker nodes such as HCD, QB API server and so on. Uh, there are a lot of these. So that's what we'll be covering. The next one would be workloads. So when you understand the basic architecture of Kubernetes. Now we'll be start deploying different objects, different components to it. So these objects could be like namespaces, services, um, 
config maps, environment variables, containers, pods, and replica sets, deployments, and so on. Because this exam, certified Kubernetes exam, this will be a complete hands-on exam, right? So you will be given the labs, so you will be given uh, different sandbox environments, and you have to perform certain tasks. Either you have to complete a use case that's been given to you, or you have to troubleshoot uh, an issue and fix it on that sandbox itself. And then your answers will be submitted, right? So we will be focusing on complete hands-on in this entire series. Yes, the first topic, because this is mostly the conceptual topic. So there are not a lot of hands-on in this one, but from this part onwards, from the second part onwards, we'll be doing the complete hands-on on each and every topic, right? The same way, third one is scheduling for high availability. So we'll be looking into these concepts like tens and tolerations, node affinity, anti-affinity, resource requests, limits, static pods, um, Kubernetes auto-scaling such as horizontal pod auto-scaling, vertical pod auto-scaling, cluster auto-scaling and so on. Then we'll also be looking into security. So yes, this is another important concept. So security, uh, RBACs, authorization, cluster role, service and like whatever has been written over there. And yes, everything will be demo. Then we have storage, um, the same concepts over here as well. Before understanding how storage uh, works in Kubernetes, you need to understand how storage works in a container. So that's why we'll start with the Docker storage and then we'll move to CSI storage class and all those concepts in Kubernetes storage. Then uh, again, this is an important part because there'll be a lot of questions in the exam, uh, which is based on troubleshooting. So let's say a sandbox environment is given to you and there is an issue in the environment. You have to troubleshoot the issue and fix it. So these troubleshooting would be at different level, like at cluster component level, at uh, metric server level for application monitoring. This could be application failure. This could be control plane component failure. This could be network failure or network troubleshooting, worker node failure, and so on. So we'll be looking into many, many hands-on scenarios so that to cover each and every part of it. So again, complete hands-on, no theory on this part as well. Then we'll be doing Kubernetes installation as well. This we can do at the very beginning as well. But if you do at the beginning, you would not understand a lot of things like what are the control plane components, what are worker nodes, what are different objects. So that's why we'll be doing it at the very end, almost at the end. This is not the end, but almost like at this part, we'll be doing the installation. Then we'll be looking into version upgrade. How do we do that with kubeadm? Then we'll also implement etcd backup and restore. So these are some of the questions that will come for sure in the exam. So we'll be looking into that in depth. Um, then the last topic will be services and networking. So over here, you see we have, again, some prerequisite topics such as switching routing DNS. These are the prerequisite for core DNS. So yes, we'll be covering that. And for Kubernetes networking, we'll be understanding Docker networking first. And then we'll see how it works, uh, how connectivity works between pods and then ingress controller, ingress resources, uh, CNI and, and so on, right? So I'm not sure how many videos will be there. I have just started recording. And as I said, I'll start publishing the videos somewhere in June first week so that I would have enough videos in the pipeline so that I could upload at least three videos per week, right? And then we have the last video or the last topic in which we'll be looking into exam pattern, how many questions will be there, time limit, what resources you can use, last minute preparation, tips and tricks and so on. Right? So that's, uh, that's the whole curriculum of this entire series. At this point, I'm guessing there would be around 40 to 50 videos, but I'm not sure. And some videos can go up to one hour as well. That's uh, that's expected. So yeah, as I said, there'll be hands-on demo, there'll be scenarios, and I will also be giving some assignments for you to do the hands-on by yourself. And if you are stuck somewhere, if you need any assistance, we have a Discord server. So feel free to ask question in our Discord server and I would highly recommend helping each other 
who are there in this journey together i will also be try to respond as soon as possible and you can al always comment on the videos as well so the question that you could have in your mind is is this series free yes it is absolutely free as always the only payment would be your likes and your comments so keep supporting keep showing your love by you know uh giving the thumbs up to every video by commenting on every video so that it can reach to maximum audience so that everyone can support us like you have been doing till now so i would really appreciate that and i will start with the next video as i said in june first week so wait for that and till then i'll be recording a lots and lots of videos so i wish you good luck happy learning and thank you so much for watching